I'm back. Well, after three months of inactivity, I'm back with some exciting stuff. To be more exact, I bought a telescope. And to be even more exact, the William Optics Zenith Star 73. Let's get to the review. Disclaimer, this isn't a paid promotion. I'm not getting paid for any statements I make in this video. Everything I say is based on my opinion and information from the internet. Now that that's out of the way, enjoy the video. So today, I've got something very exciting for you. This right here is the William Optics Zenith Star 73 Doublet Apochromatic Refractor. Let's get to the technical data. The Zenith Star 73 has a focal length of 430mm and an aperture of 73mm. That comes out to a focal ratio of 5.9, which is actually a lot of light gathering power for its focal length. The telescope uses premium FPL53 glass for better and sharper resolution. The tube length is 310mm and the whole thing only weighs 2.5kg, which means you can mount this thing onto your smaller Star Trekker like the Skywatcher Star Adventurer which only has a payload capacity of 5 kilograms. Also, this apochromatic refractor was especially built for DSLR camera use and less for dedicated astronomy camera use. Its wide field of view works pretty good on big deep sky targets like the Orion Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy, the Pleiades or the California Nebula. And well, for this telescope to work, we'll need a Z73 field flattener, an adjustable Z73 flattener or the thing I have here, the adjustable Z73 flattener reducer. So the reducer right here reduces the focal length of the telescope by 0.8 times, so the focal length is in the end 344 millimeters instead of the actual 430 millimeters. Why did I buy it? Not because I thought it was smart to reduce the focal length, but because I messed up and I bought the wrong thing, so yeah, well, that's that. To attach your DSLR camera, you'll need an M48 adapter. This M48 adapter right here is one for Canon, but there's also one for Nikon and probably for Lumix too, but I don't know about that. It's just like the back of your lens and you get your camera right on here. I can't do that in front of the camera because you are the camera, so that doesn't work out. And well, yeah, by the way, you see this telescope right here, it's pretty long, but actually this thing right here, this whole front part, is actually the dew shield for getting away light pollution. And actually, around about on this level right here is the end of the telescope, that's only the dew shield. So another interesting feature about this telescope is that you have an integrated bad enough mask. You can see it right here, I can screw this open. The bad enough mask is transparent, so you can see through it, that's pretty good, and it's integrated into this part in front here. Now, let's finally get to that. Here you have the bad enough mask. The bad enough mask is a useful tool for focusing your camera. It works just like this. You have this pattern right here, and as you put it on the front, light that goes in from a star will split up into an axe and there will be another spike the spike is like if you have this x right here the spike will be here and then by turning the focuser you'll see that spike move in the x and the way you can focus from this is if the spike if the central spike is perfectly aligned in the middle of the axe then you'll have achieved perfect focus and you know that the image is going to be sharp. Another interesting thing about this telescope is on the other side, let me just demonstrate. On the other side, right here, there's a thermometer on one of the focusing wheels. This thermometer features Fahrenheit and Celsius. So you won't have a problem as well in Europe as in the US, so that's good. On the other side, right here, you see the focusing wheel. There, we have the hard wheel. So, 
this, which is as you can see right here, does its job pretty fast and is for hard focusing. Then you take this little knob, which is for fine tuning in the end. You turn it and you see it only moves slightly. One turn of this equals two stripes on the gradient right here. So that's that. The review you just saw took place two months ago. So why didn't I upload it? Because without testing the telescope and having a self-made example picture from it, the video missed an essential part. Because everything that matters in the end is, how good is this thing now? And so I wanted to test it. But I should have known it. It just went cloudy. For two months straight. And that sucked. More and more I had the feeling that keeping the review would be senseless. But then, after two months, on Saturday the 13th, it finally happened. The clouds disappeared, and I thought, let's finally test that thing. And I did. I drove all the way to my astrophotography spot. Everything seemed perfect, but there was a major problem. The temperature. On that day, the temperature at my astrophotography spot was prognosed to not zero degrees Celsius, not minus five, not 10, but minus 12 degrees Celsius. And that's why I didn't film anything. I felt more like an ice block at some point. So that was heavy. The gear struggled with it too. The camera, for example, just didn't work anymore. And the laptop for controlling the camera also just turned off all by himself. But I managed to collect 15 light frames of my target of the night, the Andromeda Galaxy. This is one of them. Back home, I stacked the pictures in Sequator and got myself this rather good looking image. But it's not done with that. I took this image to Photoshop and Lightroom for further editing. And after an hour of changing settings, changing gradients, and correcting out some bugs, I finally got an image. Was it worth it? Let's find out. Although the picture isn't perfect, and I still have very much to learn, this picture is absolutely amazing. Having shot Andromeda in colors for the first time is just really stunning. Hopefully, I'll be able to make at least one video a month without getting fucked by the weather. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and consider subscribing, that would really help me. See you in the next one.